What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Guna channel. And I want to take us back to January, the transfer window. Of course, everybody and his dog had a very strong opinion about the fact that we needed to sign a striker because without him, we just didn't look like we were going to score the goals. Well, that seems to have been proven not true. I think you can say that scoring 25 goals in six games shows that we're probably not lacking a striker. That trip away to Dubai where they refocused on finishing and also added killer set pieces to our game and the ability to score goals from them has transformed our season or it looks like it could still transform our season. But there are still issues. There's Fabio Vieira who certainly hasn't done enough so far to cement a first team place and his injury probably came at the worst time for him. That said, it didn't look like he was going to be playing many games and his sending off against Burnley was probably just a low point that he was never going to recover from. Emil Smith-Rowe certainly hasn't had the chance in the full run to take that eight position. And the reality is that Thomas Partey is unlikely to be an Arsenal player next season. And that's a shame because last season he was being talked about as one of the best defensive midfielders. And we know that on his day, he's certainly very capable of taking us to the next level. His last involvement in an Arsenal shirt was setting up that winner against Man City. And it is a terrible shame that he's been missing. I do feel that it's unfair that so many people are saying this was predictable and we should have known that Thomas Partey wasn't going to make it through a whole season. I know that people talk about his injuries, but this season has been particularly bad. And it's worth remembering he did play 33 games last season. So when the decision came and it looked like it was a choice between Granit Xhaka and losing Thomas Partey, I really wanted us to keep Granit Xhaka. But it's become clear that Granit Xhaka left because he really didn't want to stay. And you can't keep players that don't want to stay. We have El Elneny, we have Jorginho, we have Declan Rice, we have Thomas Partey, and we have players who might be able to play in the midfield like Zinchenko and Durian Timber. But there's clearly a gap in that midfield. And so in the January transfer window, as well as being linked with every possible striker, we were also linked with a whole number of defensive midfielders, chief among the Louis, who I certainly think would improve our team. But Paulinha from Fulham, who's an excellent tackler, Zubimendi is very much talked about still as a player to come in in summer. And there were a whole host of others. There was a long period in January where it looked like we were desperately trying to bring in Anana. Decore has been talked about. But in recent weeks, the performances of Albert Sambi Lukonga at Luton have started people talking about whether this is a player that we can bring back into the side and play in that defensive midfield position instead of perhaps Jorginho or Partey. Is that... The answer, do we now save ourselves the 60 million it might otherwise cost us to bring in an Anana or a David Luiz and just rely on Sambi Lukonga? Well, I'm afraid I just don't see it. Yes, I saw him play absolutely brilliantly against Brighton and I saw him play outstandingly well against Manchester United. And without him in the side tonight, Luton got absolutely pummeled by Man City with an Erling Haaland back on form. So, is it the fact that he wasn't playing that made such a big difference? He's certainly become integral. But let's take a step back and look at since he joined Arsenal. He was somebody who was recommended to Arteta by Vincent Company, who'd managed him in Belgium. In fact, Vincent Company said of Sambi Lekonga that he might be the next Yaya Toure. Now, I personally hate it when young players are compared to other players who've gone before and been outstanding there's only one Yaya Toure and it's a shame that he didn't stay at Arsenal when he was on trial with us because who knows. But we didn't see a Yaya Toure and so last season we sent him out on loan to Crystal Palace under Patrick Vieira who had been playing him but really not consistently and by the time Patrick Vieira was sacked and Roy Hodgson came in it was clear that Roy Hodgson didn't see a player in him and so he drifted through the end of the season without much game time. At the start of this season, there was speculation he was actually going to be sold. And I don't think anyone would have made a fuss if he was. I'm not sure if the decision was to not sell him and to give him another chance on loan or whether there just weren't any buyers from him. Either is possible and I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments how you feel. And by the way, if you could just smash a like, that would make a massive difference to me. Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. But Sammy Lekonga looked destined to link up again with Vincent Company at Burnley. And for no reason I can fully understand, that didn't happen. Maybe he decided he wanted to stay in London. The last minute he joined Luton. And let's be honest, for most of the season at Luton, he has been relatively anonymous, hasn't been a starter. But he's worked his way into that side. And I love watching Luton play and I dearly hope they stay up. 
Sambi Lukonga's first big moment for me came with a beautiful lofted through ball in a game against Brighton where Luton absolutely rousted Brighton. And it does happen to Brighton at least once a season. Then I sort of took a keen interest and noticed that he's been playing really well. In the game against Manchester United, I think he bossed the midfield. And it's clear that there is a player there. But we are a team challenging the title. Absent the fact that he's on loan from Arsenal, if you were watching Luton right now, I don't know if you would suddenly think we must have him in the same way that you would say that about David Luiz. And I haven't seen a lot of Zubi Mendy, but I think that he's established himself over a number of seasons as a player that's aroused the interest of Barcelona. And if they had the money, they'd probably go for him. He's in that level of conversation. And it's looking like there might be a lot of truth to the speculation he's coming to Arsenal. Would you park him to one side for Sambi Laconga? I'm not sure you would. I'd like to see how Sambi Laconga gets on for the rest of the season. And I'm not ruling out the idea of bringing him back. As I've already said, Thomas Partey is almost certainly leaving. El Nenny, well, you can't rely on him. And we could definitely do with some players. But I find it a little bit frustrating that we're talking about Sambi Laconga for a good five or six match spell. And maybe I'm being unfair and ungenerous. Maybe his season has been better than I'm portraying it. But what of Charlie Patino, who had a great season on loan, or at least started the season really well for Blackpool last season on loan, decided he wanted a permanent move. That didn't happen. He's gone to Swansea and he's doing really well in the championship. A tough league. A, a league where there really aren't any easy games. We get tested every week and there are plenty of games. Charlie Patino was heralded as one of the brightest stars of the Hale End, uh, one of the brightest stars of Hale End one to watch for the future, and it's kind of drifted away from him. And even though he's had these good loan spells, hasn't caught the attention the way that Sambi Laconga has recently. Of the two players, I'm not sure where I'd go. We also have to think about players coming through, and there are a number. Mars Lewis Kelly, for example, is one to watch for the future, and he's another bright star from Hale End. Is there a future for Sambi Laconga? One of the reasons I doubt this, actually, is because when you watch how Luton play, he forms a double pivot. And that isn't really how Arsenal play. Who would you drop for him? Do you think, and let me know in the comments, I'm dying to hear from you. Do you think Sambi Laconga can come in instead of a Thomas Party? For those big matches, will he be there? Is he the finished article? Absolutely not. Can you see potential there? Well, I don't see the potential that Vincent Company did, if I'm honest. And I would say at least another season on loan is necessary. Because if he comes back into the Arsenal team, he's likely to get the same number of minutes as a Reese Nelson, an Eddie Nketiah now, or even an Emil Smith-Rowe. Arteta, after all, does not necessarily throw young players in. And he has given Sambi Laconga plenty of chances. There was that very telling moment in the All or Nothing documentary where he was feeling sorry for himself. And Eddie Nketiah, to his credit, gave him a hard time. Said, look, you're not the only one not playing. I think this is a symptom of something bigger. It's the pendulum. One minute a player is absolutely rubbish. The next minute they're fantastic and we need to go and get them in. I think you have to have a steady head. You have, to, you have to take a deep breath and think clearly about these things. And I feel like that's what I've done. If Sambi Laconga continues to perform as he has done at Luton and they stay up, maybe there's an argument that we should sell him to Luton and cash in. We could make a profit on him. Probably not much. And let's be honest, talking about him coming to Arsenal, it's not like he would fit into Liverpool's side or Manchester City side or the Tottenham side. Maybe there is a player in there, but let's be honest. All of the talk that has surrounded him in recent weeks as a potential answer to that midfield problem that we do have, we do need to strengthen, seems to me a little bit far-fetched. But I could just be a bit negative. So let me know in the comments how you feel about Sambi Laconga. And I can't wait to see what the opinion is. I'll run a little poll. Sambi Laconga, does he have a future in the Arsenal midfield? Is he going to save us 60 million on a player like Onana or David Luiz? Let me know how you feel. And until I see you again, be lucky. Lots of love.